All living former Prime Ministers, with the exception of Paul Keating, have signed a statement condemning Hamas. They are criticising the October 7 attack on Israel and calling for the unconditional release of hostages. Scott Morrison, Malcolm Turnbull, Tony Abbott, Julia Gillard, Kevin Rudd and John Howard have all signed the statement. The group is also endorsing a two-state solution and for sustained humanitarian aid into Gaza, saying at this time, more than ever, we must, in the words of the 34th Psalm, seek peace and pursue it. And here at home, that is done by defending our Australian values, condemning hate speech and intolerance and respecting the people of Australia in all our diversity. Joining me live now is a former Victorian Labor Minister, Phil Daladarkis. Thanks for your time. As someone, as a member of the Jewish Australian community yourself, do you welcome this statement by the six Prime Ministers, Phil? Uh, obviously, Kieran, it's great to be with you, although not under these circumstances, obviously. I think uh, the leadership that the former Prime Ministers have shown uh, is exactly what's needed at this point to demonstrate that uh, there are values that we live by in Western liberal democracies, including here at home in Australia, that are too dear to, uh, to throw out uh, because uh, it seems inconvenient. You also were a signatory to a letter of, of Labor figures uh, recently with a similar sentiment backing Israel very strongly. Was it an attempt to push back against some other Labor people who have have been very, uh, well, not of the same sort of message in recent days, pro-Palestinian, but also suggesting that a truce and this uh, a pause must happen sooner rather than later. So there are a couple of things in there, Kieran. The first one that we all must acknowledge is that we would not be in the middle of this conflict right now if uh, the government of Gaza, the Hamas terrorist uh, totalitarian regime, had not uh, engaged in an act of war by moving into Israel's territory with approximately 2,500 of their senior soldiers in their brigades uh, and attempted to not just uh, murder uh, Israel Defence Force troops, but then murder innocent civilians in some of the most barbaric ways possible. And for those people that have not seen the videos, uh, please don't go and seek them out because once you see them, you can never unsee them. And then what they did was they then took hostages uh, over, I think at last count, 220 odd hostages back into Gaza that they can use and are using uh, in terms of negotiations for release of uh, Palestinian uh, militias uh, held in Israeli jails right now. And we must never forget that there was effectively a ceasefire until the 7th of October, at which point uh, Hamas's incursion into Israel began this, what can only be described as nightmare, both for the Israelis and also yeah. for the Palestinian innocent civilians. When you look at some of the comments made by members of your party and members of the federal government, I want to get your reaction to, say, Tony Burke's intervention at the end of last week. Um, he has been criticised by Peter Dutton, among others, but this is what Peter Dutton said, that Tony Burke, to his great shame, is playing to his constituency within his own electorate when he should be acting in the national interests. What's your reaction to the comments made by Tony Burke, particularly when asked whether or not genocide and apartheid was being seen in Israel? Well, I think uh, Tony has a record that uh, on this conflict in the Middle East and in relation to Israel itself that is well known uh, to many, both across the party uh, and the public. Uh, what I'll say is this. The last time I looked, the leader of both the Federal Labor Party and also the Prime Minister of this country uh, is uh, Anthony Albanese. And uh, to his great credit, uh, the Prime Minister has shown a wonderful leadership and a very strong support for both uh, the Israeli government to undertake a course of action that will hopefully rid both the Palestinian people and Israel from the threat that Hamas uh, poses. Uh, furthermore, uh, if there is a spokesperson for this government, I look to the Prime Minister and the Foreign Minister uh, and the Defence Minister for that matter to represent what our nation's interests are uh, and what this government is going to do. And in that uh, position, uh, I am assured, I'm reassured and I'm comforted by everything that Prime Minister Albanese says. Uh, in terms of Minister Burke, uh, he'll have to have a discussion with the Prime Minister as whether or not he's gone off the script or not. 
Do you think that this it diminishes Australia's support for Israel if there are mixed messages out of out of the cabinet? Uh, look, on, on that particular issue, I'll say this. As you introduced me, I've been a cabinet minister. Uh, I know what it means to have cabinet solidarity, which is that uh, once the government and the cabinet decides on a position, that you hold that position irrespective of what your personal views are. But what, what I'll say is this, uh, Kieran, that the government uh, of the day speaks with authority and that comes from the Prime Minister. And uh, the views that are expressed are here uh, in, in both the society at large, but also within the parliament, uh, are some, uh, of some concern. But at the same time, I keep returning to the point. Uh, if Prime Minister Albanese says something, that's good enough for me as both a member of the Jewish community and also uh, a member of the Australian community. While we're looking at the Australian reaction, I want to get your thoughts on what the Greens' contribution has been, um, including in the immediate aftermath of the atrocity on October 7 by the terrorists uh, in southern Israel, that the, they were critical. One of the senators, uh, Marine Faruqi, was critical that the parliament was illuminated in the colours of the Israeli flag. You've had the Greens then... In those days, immediately after the atrocity um, by, by Hamas, supporting the pro-Palestinian rallies, what what have what have you made of the Greens' contribution to the debate? Well, I've got to say that I'm extraordinarily extraordinarily troubled by their contribution, uh, both from a policy point of view, but also a political point of view. The fact of the matter is, the most recent. Uh, the most recent conflict in the Middle East uh, prior to, obviously, the outgoing of hostilities now is the civil war in Yemen. Uh, there is, obviously, a terrorist organisation uh, that has been uh, at the behest of that, which is called the Houthis, also supported, ironically, by Iran. Now, uh, just to put this into context for your listeners, let's be really clear about this. Nearly 500,000 people have died in that conflict. Nearly 500,000 people, including women, children, innocent civilians. Compare that to the, the sad de death toll, both of Israelis and of Palestinians, uh, not including, obviously, the terrorists themselves, in Gaza. And what you can see is a very clear uh, bias, uh, almost anti-Semitism, uh, from the Greens Party. Uh, Senator Faruqi, who you mentioned, uh, was elected to the Senate, I believe, uh, in 2018. Uh, in that time in Parliament, she has raised the issue of the, uh, the war in Yemen once, Kieran, once. At the same time, she has spoken about the uh, issues in Israel uh, on no less than 12 occasions. So uh, if you look at Adam Bant, He's spoken twice about Yemen since he's been in Parliament. And, of course, the conflict in Yemen started in 2014 and he's been a Member of Parliament since 2010. But he's spoken about Israel 14 times. Senator uh, Steele John, who is the uh, spokesperson for foreign affairs, has spoken about Israel six yeah. times in Parliament. He's spoken about Yemen zero times. And, of course, when it comes to one of our own senators here in Victoria, the outgoing retiring Senator Janet Rice, she's spoken about Israel yeah. 12 times, but she's spoken about 500,000 deaths in Yemen exactly zero times. So if you want to have a look at the Greens' history, both in this conflict in Israel and Gaza, and also their broader concern for lives lost in in conflicts in the Middle East, I think those uh, figures speak for themselves. It's a clear bias where they only care about Arab Muslim deaths if somehow they're involved with a Jewish-Israeli conflict. But when it comes to other conflicts in the Middle East, they're ridiculously quiet. Phil Daladakis, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me on, Kieran.